Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. There's been a bunch of leaks that were data mined from the latest 3.9.1 PTU build by Star Citizen Leaks and then posted on the Star Citizen Reddit as well. Links to the post down below if you want to take a look at them yourself. Though, take them with a pinch of salt as some lack context of exactly what they're going to be used and how they're going to be used. There might be additional bits to this. There might be um, bits here that aren't used at all and stuff might change by the time the patch is released with Fleet Week. So these are are considered to be spoilers so um, please bear that in mind and if you don't want spoilers at all you don't like the idea of knowing what might be happening next week and some of the, the stuff that we'll be seeing and then sort of switch off now I'll chuck in some wild speculation too because why not they were able to mine the theaters of war intro movie which is looking really slick this is the Star Marine, Star Citizen combined arms objective based 20v20 more traditional battlefield type mode. If Theatres of War feels smooth and performs well, I actually think it's going to be really good fun. That map appears that they show to be the one that I played at CitizenCon 2019, though improved. That's all I can probably show of Theatres of War until Cloud Imperium releases more public testing stuff for it because it's going to have a Evocati NDA'd test this weekend and I'm looking forward to that but can't talk more about that specific test personally. For Fleet Week, the leaks say that there are various manufacturer halls that we will see um, a vehicle hall with RSI, Tumbrel, Origin, Anvil, and then some ship halls with RSI and Origin being one of the halls, Aegis Dynamics being another, and Valero Space, Drake Defense Con. So that's going to be them probably looking at things like the Cutlass Blue and their ships as security ships for militia and security forces rather than, you know, being used for smugglers and pirates and that sort of stuff. And there's also going to be a, a hall there for support and logistics. So um, the idea here is that manufacturers will be tapering over the halls every couple of days and sort of rotating. Um, there are some assets which appear to be ship and vehicles on the hollow displays. They're going to be around some of these halls. So not flyable, but showing their white box in 3D potentially. So um, these vehicles that are listed on the hollow displays that were mined are the Vulture, the Taurus. So that is the constellation. It's nice to know that it um, has some form of uh, presence. Uh, the Nova Tank, the Nautilus, the Mercury Star Runner. The Mercury Star Runner's got a bit more chonky. Uh, I'm really liking the way the Mercury's actually evolved, but um, I suspect some people are going to dislike it. Uh, there's the Kraken, the Hercules, which we've seen some of the white box of previously, uh, the Corsair, and the Polaris. I think uh, I I've been looking forward to seeing the Polaris in a bit more detail, even if it's just quite basic on a hollow viewer. There are a couple of other ones that were listed on that hollow viewer that I want to talk about and have a read about their descriptions. The Redeemer. There are a few ships that are awaiting deployment as eagerly as the Aegis Dynamics Redeemer. After being featured at two previous Invictus launch weeks, the Navy is closer than ever to utilizing the full potential of this cutting-edge gunship. The UEEN has worked closely with Aegis to perfect the Redeemer during this time to ensure that it will meet and exceed all operational needs of such an advanced vessel. From the early reports arriving from various test squads, including the infamous Squadron 999, the Redeemer is going to be worth the wait. Designed to carry significant cargo and troops, the Redeemer will provide support in a variety of combat situations and logistical operations. The state-of-the-art technology employed by Aegis should make the craft one of the easiest to maintain to operational effective standards. Additionally, the Boarding hatch will permit faster transitions in situations while the vector lock thruster design will allow for optimal maneuvering via its twin nacelles. High Command is eager to see what the Redeemer can do once it finds its way into the hands of enthusiastic pilots across the naval fleet. So it does sound like it's going to be used um, as a military, proper military ship in the future. And I'd love to see this as like a reconcept sale um, of the Redeemer during Fleet Week, but just seeing it on a hollow viewer would actually just be pretty cool. It's nice to know that they've got um, some work done on the Redeemer, even if it's just like an updated white box and uh, they've got it in, its mar in their minds what they want to do with it. Uh, it does look a little bit different, the Redeemer. It's got like a different tail, but if these sort of like um, hollow viewer models are accurate, then it's um, very close to the original, which is um, actually pretty good. And I think it will keep a lot of people happy. There appears to be a new Origin vehicle, the G12A, which is probably what the Origin teaser a while ago was. While 
Larger vehicles like the Tumbrel Nova and the Anvil Ballista may be better known for their military might. The UEE deploys thousands of smaller tactical vehicles in defense of the Empire, more easily transported to provide greater mission flexibility. These rovers and gravlevs often allow tactical responsiveness to a wider variety of terrain and scenarios. When atmospheric conditions become hostile and can impede flight, having a varied motor pool at your disposal can make all the difference. One of the newest rovers to join the ranks is the G-12A from Origin Jump Works. While it may have the sleek lines the manufacturer is known for, the G-12A is reinforced with heavier armor and fortified wheels and comes armed with a full defensive and offensive suite. While deployed, it will initially serve as a patrol vehicle for landing sites located in active combat areas with severe weather patterns. So I really like this idea, sort of like a scouting-ish uh, hold the lines vehicle for um, more extreme weather conditions, that sort of stuff. I uh, really like the idea there. Uh, Rice Maiden was the one to grab those images, apparently, of the G12A, the Mercury, and the Redeemer. There is apparently going to be an interdiction drive now more confirmed, I suppose, for the Cutlass Blue. See that justice is served with the Burke QD. This powerful quantum dampener from Ytech projects a massive field that keeps ships from engaging their quantum drives, making it a valuable component for both the law enforcement and security professionals. That might mean it comes with it by default, but there are potentially variants of that ship. Maybe it doesn't, maybe it's just a, a part that we can purchase, and maybe it comes with cells at default, maybe it comes with cells and a quantum addiction device, we'll have to wait and see. There is a dock that has been tacked on to by Genie Point, the station above Arc Corp. It's like a military um, large ship dock, and according to the leaks, it looks like a fleet of UE ships will be using it, suggested to be a Javelin, two Idrises, and lots of F Eights. These ships will move between the uh, station and assumedly somewhere near Area 18 or the Expo Hall there, the Brevet Convention Center. I suppose it will probably sort of like do flybys and go past places that are pretty to watch that sort of like display from. Maybe there'll be like a, a pl place that we quantum travel to to have a look to see um, where these like parades and flybys are going to be. Um, there are supposed to be fireworks, basically what we saw in the teaser trailer for Fleet Week, but real time. Don't expect these ships to have an interior though, uh, the big ones anyway, but I am going to have fun trying to get on the Idris and Javelin and whatever else is on the show. I personally expect to see Gladius and F7As as well, military versions of those flying around with the fleet and parading. I was hoping we would get to see a Bengal carrier, but there's no mention of that yet. Will the F8 be on sale? Well, there isn't any confirmation of that yet, but a lot of ships will be on sale, and obviously the F8 features heavily in uh, media and on these sort of like files that they've uh, turned up from Star Citizen Leaks. We could also very well see some other straight to flyable ships that haven't been mentioned yet, um, some concepts that haven't been mentioned, so maybe something else new other than the, 12, uh, the G12A uh, vehicle from Origin. Cloud Imperium are supposed to be unveiling some info on ship customization over the next week or so, so we might have some ability to paint our ships soon as well. That'd be great if we are able to do some cool stuff at Fleet Week. It was suggested there might be some Fleet Week skins for ships as well, and obviously we know there's going to be a big old sale uh, covering a huge range of those ships and a free fly and all that sort of jazz as well. So very much excited for Fleet Week. As you might have seen in my previous video, you can have a look around the Brevet Convention Center, the entrance hall to this um, sort of Invictus um, free fly uh, Fleet Week thing that's going on uh, at the moment. Obviously, you can't get into the halls yet, uh, but you can have a look around at the, the stuff in 3.9.1 in the PTU. And there's some cool stuff there and the build's pretty stable other than the fact that some people are not able to get their ships um, spawnable, um, which is obviously a major issue that uh, Cloud Imperium need to fix. But I'm interested to know what your sort of experiences of 3.9.1 on the PTU are. Are you excited for the Theatres of War tests? Are you looking forward to them being in more hands than just the Ivacardis? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a giveaway. For May, we're giving away a Star Citizen game package with Arrow Light Fighter. All you've got to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details below. 
I am a shill for a couple of companies, NordVPN and NordPass. If you are looking for a VPN or a password management system, I recommend you check them out. They've got many benefits over free services. And as I'm pretty security conscious, uh, I love those kind of services. Also, there's Shadow. If you are thinking about getting a new gaming rig or upgrading your gaming PC for Star Citizen or whatever, then consider Shadow instead. It is a internet cloud-based subscription service like Stadia, like G force now but this one gives you access to a full windows 10 environment which is fully customizable and that is significantly better in my opinion allowing you to do a lot more with it check out the links below for them or use the code board gamer for discount also if you wish to support the channel further there is patreon there's the youtube join member button down below that really helps this is a community supported channel and i wouldn't be able to do what i do without the support that i get if you want to share these videos if you want to comment give feedback whatever that is also in hugely appreciated thanks very much for watching guys you take care and i'll see you in the verse